is your network ready for Teams? In this session, I will talk about packet loss. The definition of packet loss is when packets are lost or discarded between two endpoints, between the sender and the receiver. So the sender sends the packets, the receiver does not get the packets, or the other way around. From the team standpoint, the symptoms are loss of audio, choppy or broken audio, robotic voice due to team's audio healer, frozen video or fragmented video, delays in your hearing or being heard by the other party. These are all the symptoms of packets that have been lost or dropped in between your team's client and the team's back in server in case of uh, meetings and um, conferences or between the two team's clients in peer-to-peer -peer, uh, scenarios. So the packets are dropped or lost in between and these are the symptoms. How do we fix packet loss? How do you limit it? Using wired instead of Wi-Fi, improving Wi-Fi reception, and increasing bandwidth. These are some of the suggestions to limit packet loss. And I believe increasing bandwidth plus doing the, the right routing and the proper routing according to Microsoft 365 connectivity principles also play an important part in limiting packet loss. Now looking at the metrics or the targets for Teams, the first packet loss from Teams client to Microsoft Edge, less than 10% during any 200 millisecond interval, less than 10%. Now from the customer's edge to Microsoft edge, less than 1% during any 200 millisecond interval. Looking at the packet loss from the Teams client to Microsoft edge, it's less than 1% during any 15 seconds interval. And from the customer edge to Microsoft edge, it's less than 0.1% during any 15 seconds interval. Now let's jump to understanding what packets are we sending in the team's environment. TCP transmission control protocol, it requires acknowledgement by the receiver. So the sender sends a packet, the receiver has to acknowledge, yes, I have received the packet. Lost packets are resent, causing subsequent packets to be delayed because the sender, the source, has to wait for the acknowledgement from the receiver, the destination. So before getting that acknowledgement or that message from the receiver, from the destination, it can't send other packets. So TCP is a connection-oriented protocol and it has to get that message back, that acknowledgement back from the receiver, the destination that yes, those packets have been received, have been delivered successfully before it can send other packets. So that's how TCP works. On the other hand, we have UDP, which is the user datagram protocol, which is send and forget. No acknowledgement, just in the packets. Once we send the packets or the packet from the source to the destination, it just fires off, it just sends the packets, it does not wait for acknowledgement. So this is called connectionless protocol. So we have connection oriented, TCP connectionless, which is UDP. And the question is, which one Teams uses? Now Teams uses both. The preferred protocol is UDP because it's quick, it's fast, it's the right protocol for real-time communications, but it falls back to TCP if UDP is blocked by your firewall. If we can't route UDP packets, then we fall back to TCP. So all Teams modalities use UDP. Now Teams modalities means audio, video, screen sharing, we have live event, all of that. So they all use UDP by default. So that's the preferred protocol. The only exception is live events attendees. Live events, the broadcast events, we have organizers and we have attendees. The organizers use UDP for audio, video, screen sharing, everything. So that's the organizer side of things. The attendees use TCP by default. It's one-way stream TCP to the attendees. That's the only exception. So what really happens is that UDP is tried first. So the ports, UDP ports 3478, 3479, 3480, and 3481. These are the UDP ports that are used by Teams for audio, video, screen sharing, live event, everything. So this is tried first. If this fails, if it doesn't work, if it's blocked, then we fall back to TCP, only two ports, 80 and 443. So just to recap, UDP is the preferred protocol for Teams, all modalities. The only exception is the live event attendees, that's TCP. It's one way TCP stream. UDP is tried first, the ports 3478 all the way to 3481. That doesn't work. We fall back to TCP 80 and 443. What happens if we lose those packets, the UDP packets in particular? Because if we lose TCP, if we don't get the acknowledgement message from the receiver, then we are going to send the packets again. 
In the case of UDP, that's not the case. So UDP just send and forget. Do we have any mechanism to recover from packet loss? And the answer is yes. That's forward error correction, FEC. FEC is a method of obtaining error control in data transmission. Error control in data transmission in which the source, the transmitter, sends redundant data. And the destination, the receiver, recognizes only the portion of the data that contains no apparent errors. So the error control, the recovery of packet loss is built into the UDP packets. We are sending redundant data. If there is a problem with the network, we don't do this all the time only if there are problems on the network. Now, Teams clients, Teams servers, and the components that the, the whole Teams technology and solutions understand, check, and assess the network and the transmission. If there are problems, we have FEC. We don't do this all the time. We only do it. It only kicks in. It only sets in when there are problems on the network. The sender sends a redundant error correcting code along with the data frame. So there is a code, there is a redundant data and the code that goes with the frame. Now the receiver performs necessary checks based on the additional redundant bits. So it understands, again, this is built into the client, built into the Teams client, the UDP, and the whole mechanism to just perform necessary checks based on the additional redundant bits. Now, if it finds that the data is free from errors, it executes error correcting code that generates the actual frame and then just discards or removes the redundant data before it sends that to the upper layers. So FEC is the mechanism we have in Teams. It's part of UDP. It's part of the whole process, the Teams services and components to have redundant data in the packets that we are sending from the sender to the receiver. Now the destination will do the processing, the checks, and will understand based on the code and based on the data, which ones are the original packets and which ones we can drop. Now looking at the advantages of FEC, because FEC does not require handshaking between the source and destination, it can be used for broadcasting of data to many destinations or destinations simultaneously from a single source. So think of TCP, if I want to do TCP packets, send, acknowledge, send, receive, acknowledge, and then back, I have to do this from the source to the destination, from the source to each destination. In the case of UDP, it's from one source, single source, to many destinations. It does not require this handshaking from source to destination. So basically, I can do the FEC from if I'm talking to an audience of five or ten Teams users, I'm sending the packets once, or the redundant packets in this case, once from my source to all the destinations at the same time. The other one is saves bandwidth required for retransmission. I'm not retransmitting. I'm not resending packets. It's just, again, we need to understand that FEC kicks in when there are network problems. So it's not all the time. That's the first thing. Second thing, it's from one to many or one source to many destinations at the same time. I'm not resending or retransmitting. Now, to explain all of that, let's have a look at this diagram here. So the, the, this one, the top one, is just the normal teams to teams. If when I think of one to one, or even if it's one to, to many, and we have this conference. So basically we have five packets and we're sending five packets. So it arrives on the to the destination in the right order. We have all of them, no problems, network is good, routing, everything. If I take a look at the second one, so looking at on the left hand side, looking at this one here, so we have those five packets and we have problem with the network, so forward error correction kicks in, so we are sending redundant packets. So we have one, two, we have two, three, three, four, four, five. So I'm sending redundant packets of two, three, and four. So if you think of it, if I lose this one here, two and three, I still have one, two, three, four, four, five. If I lose this one, I still have one, two, two, three, four, five. But this scenario here, if I lose two packets, like two, Packet. So I have one, two, I have four, five, and this is one, two, and this is four, five. Now what's going to happen here, the team's audio healer will try to bridge this gap, will try to fix this. Now sometimes it can, sometimes it can't. If it can, that's fine, it will do it. We'll try to guess and based on some mechanisms and um, um, solutions, probably AI and other things, it will try to guess the lost packets, which is in this case, two packets. We have uh, we have three. I mean, we lost three completely. So it's one packet. We lost three 
it will try to guess it and that's where sometime you hear that robotic voice if it can get it fine if it can't then probably this network is not right like if we lose up to two probably we can recover if it's more than that then this network is not good for udp or even tcp it, it's not going to work so we have problems on the network so this is how fec works in teams and finally if i want to look at the metrics or the targets for my uh, packet loss the thresholds of my packet loss so if i look at from the client to Microsoft Edge, this is my client, this is my team's client, this is the customer edge, public internet, and the Microsoft Edge, which is the Azure front door. So from here to here, it's less than 1% on 15 seconds, or every 15 second interval. If I want to look at from the customer edge to Microsoft Edge, it's 0.1% for 15 second interval. So this is less than 1%, this is less than 0.1%. And again, this is the Edge Microsoft Network, and this is my team's backend servers.